My name is Seth Moore, the Senior Patrol Leader of Troop 46, and I will serve as your Master of Ceremonies today. Welcome to this Eagle Scout Court of Honor of Troop 46. We are here today to recognize Miles Iverson for attaining the highest award in scouting, the rank of Eagle Scout. We appreciate the time and effort you have taken to join our celebration. As we begin, I invite Reverend Matthew Farr to lead us in the invocation. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on the high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, Reverend Farr. At this time, I would like to ask the color guard to lead us in the presentation of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, the Scout Oath, and Scout Law. Scouts and guests, please rise for the presentation of the colors. Color Guard, attention. Scouts, attention. Color Guard, forward march. Color Guard, halt. Color Guard, post the colors. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All scouts, please join me in the scout oath. On my honor, I would do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake. Scout law, a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two, color guard reform. Color guard return to post. Color guard hall. Color guard dismissed. You may be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Pete Lloyd, Assistant Scoutmaster of Troop 46. By the authority vested in me as a representative of the Great Smoky Mountain Council and the National Council Boy Scouts of America, I declare this court of honor to be duly convened for the sole purpose of presenting the Eagle Scout Award to Miles Eric Iverson. I will now ask the convocation of Eagles to share, to share with us the trail to Eagle.
This is the voice of the eagle, whose eagle is hard, hard to reach. As we begin this eagle court of honor and examine the trail to eagle, it is fitting that we started with the fundamental principles of scouting, the scout oath and the scout law. We have just joined together in reciting both. Let us begin on the trail to eagle by lighting the candles, symbolic of the three parts of the scout oath. Duty to God and country. Duty to others. And duty to self. We remember well when you first came to the base of the cliff and how you looked up with ambition and determination. Look back for a moment, look down at the cliff you have climbed, and look at the experiences you have encountered in your ascent. These experiences should not be forgotten. You should profit by making sure the expertise should not. Experiences do not occur again. Experience is a valuable teacher, and if you heed its teachings, we remember when you took your first step upon the trail that leads upward. With that first step, you began to grow physically, mentally, and morally. You started living the scout oath and law. All the while you were on that trail, we watched you, we studied you, and we saw you learn by doing. Upon joining, you were only a scout. At that time, you began working hard on your requirements to reach the tenderfoot rank, the first ledge on the trail to Eagle. Before long, your fellow scouts were calling you a tenderfoot, and they were right. You were indeed a tenderfoot scout. Soon you re reached the second ledge, and there you were greeted by a large group of second-class scouts. Some, like you, stop to catch their breath before continuing along the trail. You begin to study more, you worked harder, and almost before you knew it, you came to another ledge, the ledge where the first-class scouts dwell. There you found a tempting green meadow by a crystal clear stream bathed in the sun. There you were tempted to remain. Yes, you could have remained there to live in the first class scout glory, but your ambition spurred you on. We remember your advancement to Star Scout. The trail from first class to star rank was not as difficult as it had seemed. This spurred you on, and again you climbed higher. The trail was steeper and less worn. Fewer scouts seemed to be headed in your direction. You looked down and saw the crowds below you. You looked up and saw a few above you and, with the same determination with which you started your climb, you continued up the trail. Soon you reached a badge of life rank. The heart badge was then placed on your uniform. You will never forget your thoughts at that moment. The feeling has been experienced by all scouts on reaching the ledge of life scout. Now I am close to Eagle. I will carry on. The trail became tougher, but more interesting. The original principles, the scout oath and law, now had fuller meaning. Your understanding of them was deeper. Yes, we have watched your character unfold. We have watched your leadership expand. We have watched your mind develop and your wisdom increase. We have watched all these things in you, and now that you are at the threshold of your goal, we welcome you, for you have done your climbing in a true scout-like manner. This is the voice of the eagle. But what exactly does it mean to be an Eagle Scout? In his role as Life to Eagle coach for Troop 46, Mr. Bob Elliott has mentored nearly 50 young men to the rank of Eagle Scout. We've asked Mr. Elliott to share the reflection, to share the reflection, 100 Scouts. Of any 100 boys who become scouts, it must be confessed that 50, I'm sorry, 30 will drop out in their first year. 
Perhaps this may be regarded as a failure, but later in life, all of these will remember that they had been in scouting and will speak well of the program. Of the 100, only rarely will one ever appear before a juvenile court judge. 12 of the 100 will be from families who have no religious affiliation. Through scouting, these 12 and many of their families will be brought into contact with the church and will be continue to be active all their lives. Six of the 100 will become pastors. Of these 100 will learn something from scouting and all will develop hobbies that will add interest throughout the rest of their lives. Approximately one half will serve in the military and in varying degree profit from their scout training. At least one will use it to save another person's life and many may credit it for saving their own. Four of the 100 will reach the eagle rank. And at least one will later say that he valued his eagle badge above his college degree. Many will find their future vocation through merit badge work and scouting contacts. 17 of the boys will become adult leaders and will give leadership to thousands of additional boys. One in four boys in America will become scouts. But it is interesting to know that of the leaders in this nation in business, religion, and politics, three out of four were scouts. This afternoon, we honor one scout in a hundred. We know the things that he has done in the past, quite a bit in the past. Just imagine what he will do in the future. Now I, now I invite Mr. Les Beaver, Assistant Scoutmaster in Troop 46, to review the requirements to become an Eagle Scout and share how Miles has met them. The 1938 Handbook for Scoutmasters states, the badges which accompany his advancement and which the scout wears on his uniform are not to show that he has passed certain tests. They should, there should be no past tense implied. On the contrary, each badge cries out, I can, right now and here. So, what can an Eagle Scout do? Let's take a look at some of the things he has done in preparing to be an Eagle Scout. In terms of ranks, he has earned the Scout Badge in the ranks of Tenderfoot, Second Class, First Class, Star, Life, and finally, Eagle. Along the way, he has had to earn 14 required merit badges and at least seven elective merit badges. Served in troop leadership positions for at least 16 months and spent at least 13 hours on service projects, not including the many hours he most likely spent on his Eagle Scout service project. In all, he's completed approximately 325 different requirements. So what have those requirements taught him? First and foremost, of course, he's an outdoorsman. He knows how to camp, swim, hike, use wood tools, build a fire, use a camp stove, and find his way with a map and compass. He has spent at least 20 days and nights camping out in a tent on a site that he most likely selected himself. Many of those times he planned his own menu, cooked his own food. The Eagle Scout is comfortable with nature. He can identify local animals and plants. 
He understands the causes of water, land, and air pollution and developed a project to solve an environmental problem. He embodies the scout motto of be prepared. He knows how to treat fractures, head injuries, hypothermia, convulsions, frostbite, burns, abdominal pain, muscle cramps, heck, even knocked out teeth. He knows what to do in case of a fire, an explosion. Maybe there's a desert emergency, a motor vehicle accident, a mountain accident, food poisoning, gas leak, earthquake, fire, flood, tornado, you name it. He can handle it all. The Eagle Scout is a good citizen. He's been to city meetings, knows how the city government is organized. He knows who his U.S. senators and representatives are, and has written a letter to one of them about a national issue. He's read the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. He knows how to manage money and understands the risk and benefits of putting his money in savings bonds, mutual funds, common stock, real estates. He has set certain financial goals for himself and worked toward achieving those goals. The Eagle Scout has also set and worked toward fitness goals. He's competing against himself in test of aerobic endurance, flexibility, muscular strength. He knows what it means to be physically, mentally, and socially fit. He's a good family member. He knows what things are important to the members of his family about finances and drug abuse. All these things he did in order to earn those 14 merit badges required for Eagle. And beyond those, he earned at least seven and many more elected merit badges, most likely, which introduced him to subjects such as shooting, welding, climbing. But so what is an Eagle Scout? Well, let's go back to that old handbook for Scoutmasters says that he is a young man who was qualified to help others as well as take care of himself. His badge is not a decoration, but rather a symbol of knowledge and ability. So what has Miles done along his path to Eagle? On the back of the program, you will see many of Miles' accomplishments, and I just want to touch base on a few of those. He has earned 41 merit badges. That's 20 more than is required to achieve Eagle Scout, and that will be represented by a silver palm and a bronze palm on his Eagle rank. With Troop 46, Miles has attended ILST nine times and gone to national youth leadership training in preparation for his numerous leadership positions such as chaplain's aide, OA representative, outdoor ethics guide, historian, librarian, scribe, bugler, patrol leader, and senior patrol leader. Along that way, along those ways as well, Miles has camped 116 nights, hiked 339 miles, canoed 140 miles, performed 137 service hours with Troop 46, along with attending summer camp at least four times and camping and staffing at CBT twice. High adventure bases, Miles loves high adventure. Fill Mount Scout Ranch in 2021 and 23, Florida Sea Base in 2022, and the Charles L. Summers Canoe Base also in 2022, qualifying him for the Triple Crown of High Adventure. He's also attended Northern Tier's Oat Peak Winter Camp. That's a cold place, guys. Yeah, that's really cold. Awards. Miles has earned a National Historic Trails Award, National Outdoor Award for Camping, Aquatics, Conservation, and Adventure, and Camp Buck Tom's Brave Service Award and the Unit Hornaday Award. He's a Brotherhood member in the Order of the Arrow and has served as Lodge Chaplain and Lodge Leadership Development Chair and on staff with Operation Arrow at the National Scout Jamboree in 2023. I would offer you that Miles has uh, thoroughly gotten the most he could out of scouting, uh, and I'm sure he's had some great adventures along the way. So with that report, I'm pleased to announce to this uh, court of honor and to the, members, to the members gathered here that Miles has qualified for the rank of Eagle Scout and is entitled to receive the Eagle Scout Award. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Matt Helmers, who will give the Eagle Charge and Promise. Matt is Miles' is Miles's cousin and earned his Eagle Scout rank in Troop 56 of Stewartville, Minnesota. Thank you. Miles, would you please come stand to my right and face the audience? <clears throat> Becoming an Eagle Scout is a great accomplishment. Being an Eagle Scout is a great responsibility. As an Eagle, the Scout Oath and Scout 
Voila should take on new meaning for you. The motto and slogan take on new urgency. As an eagle, your first obligation is to live with honor. You are marked as a leader. For good or ill, people will follow the example you set. Give up anything before you give up your reputation and good name. As Shakespeare said, mine honor is my life. Both go, both, both grow and warm. Take honor from me and my life is done. Let the white of the eagle badge remind you of honor. Your second obligation as an Eagle Scout is to be loyal. As a follower, you promise to be loyal to those above you. Now, as a leader, you must also be loyal to those below you, treating them as you would want to be treated. And you must also be loyal to your ideals not letting others sway you from your course. Let the blue of the eagle badge remind you of loyalty. Your third obligation as an Eagle Scout is to become, be creative. Stepping, stepping into your new role as a leader, you will face many challenges and obstacles. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are for. You must have, it, have the courage to do what is right, no matter what other people do or say. Let the red of the eagle badge remind you of courage. Your fourth obligation is to serve others. For a leader is above all a servant. Let the practice of a daily good turn lead to a lifetime of service. For only in giving up yourself do you give anything of value. Just as it always has, let the scroll on your badge remind you of service. Your final obligation as an Eagle Scout is to have vision. As a leader, you must now blaze your own trail. Just as the eagle soaring high, high above the ground can look far into the distance, so too must you look far into the future. Many people will follow you only with vision will you lead them in the right direction. Let the silver eagle hanging from your badge remind you of vision. These then are your obligations as an Eagle Scout. Honor, loyalty, courage, service, and vision. By meeting these obligations, you can lead your community, your society, your nation, and your world toward a better tomorrow. Miles Eric Iverson, I charge you to take your Eagle Scout promise without reservation and with the ideals of honor loyalty, <coughs> courage, service, and vision before you. By the reputation of the Eagle Scout promise with your fellow Eagles, you will become an Eagle Scout. When you pledge yourself on your sacred honor, you will be sealing your eternal loyalty to the code of the Eagle Scout. Miles, many times as a scout, 
join with your fellow scouts in repeating the scout oath. Now you will stand with fellow Eagle Scouts and re repeat a new oath. The Eagle Scout promise. The, though the words you will say are similar to those you, this, you have said so many times before, this, after, this afternoon they will mean more to you than they ever have. When you pledge yourself on your sacred honor, you will be sealing your oath with the words that close the Declaration of Independence. Will all Eagle Scouts in the audience stand at this time and rededicate themselves by repeating the Eagle Scout promise with the all new Eagle Scout? I reaffirm my allegiance. I reaffirm my allegiance to the three promises of the Scout Oath. To the three promises of the Scout Oath. I thoughtfully recognize. I thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself. And take upon myself the obligation and responsibilities of an Eagle Scout. The obligations and responsibilities of an Eagle Scout. On my honor, I will do my best. On my honor, I will do my best. To make my training and example. To make my training and example. My rank and my influence. My rank and my influence. Count strongly for better scouting. Count strongly for better scouting. And for better better citizenship and for better citizenship in my troop in my troop in my community in my community and in my contacts with other people and in my contacts with other people to this i pledge my sacred honor to this i pledge my sacred honor to you may sit down thank you Would Pete Lloyd, Assistant Scoutmaster Troop 46, come up to present the Eagle, <coughs> Eagle Scout Award in Palms? Will Miles' parents please come forward? Miles, your parents have undoubtedly been your primary source of help and strength on your journey to becoming an Eagle Scout. No one will ever know the unnumbered acts of self-sacrifice and helpfulness that your parents have provided leading to this day. I would ask your mother to pin the Eagle Medal on your uniform.
Earning the Eagle rank requires earning 21 merit badges. Miles has earned a total of 41 merit badges, and those extra 20 merit badges are denoted by one silver palm and one bronze palm worn on the ribbon of the medal. Miles, in recognition of your mother's devotion, please present her with the Eagle Mother's pen. Now I'm going to ask your father to place the eagle neckerchief around your neck. In recognition to your father's devotion, please present him with the Eagle Father's pen. <coughs> Finally, it's uh, my honor to present you with your Eagle Scout certificate. I'd like to first thank everyone who came here today. Your presence means a lot to me, and I'm very proud to say that I know all of you. I would like to especially thank a few people who were instrumental in the process of making my way through scouting to its peak. Mr. Underwood, without you, I would have never joined Troop 46, let alone been involved with scouting, going all the way back to Cub Scouts. Without you, I would have never been involved with scouts in the first place. It is my honor to present you with this Eagle Mentors pin. Will you please come forward? Mr. Elliott, you are my life's eagle coach, and without your reminders, guidance, or assistance, I would have surely never made it. It is my honor to present to you this Eagle Mentors pin. Mr. Hill and Ms. Vaughn, you were both my patrol advisors as a part of the Panthers, and your guidance throughout the years has shaped me to be the person that I am today. It is my honor to present you with these Eagle Mentors pins.
And it would hardly be a Troop 46 e report of honor without Mr. Lloyd getting a mentor spin. And this is certainly for a reason. Mr. Lloyd, you have been an unending source of advice or, and, of, and leadership over the years. And without you, I doubt I would have even made first class, let alone Eagle. Thank you for your wisdom and, in my, and your example. And it is my great honor to present you with this Eagle Mentor Spin. I would next like to thank the Episcopal Church of the Good Samaritan and Father Cal Calhoun for allowing me to do my project on the grounds. I hope the playground will be of good use to the church for many years to come. Additionally, I would like to thank Mr. Schaefer for use of his tractor at my Eagle project, as it saved an inordinate, time, inordinate amount of time shoveling dirt and mulch uh, that undoubtedly contributed to the timely completion of my project. Finally, I would like to thank Finney and Gilbert for being the only non-family member to show up to every workday, including the last impromptu second one that I planned in half an hour. Thank you. <laughs> when I reflect on Scouts, I see more than time on the weekends in a Monday night meeting. Ever since Cub Scouts, I've been in scouting program, and now that I'm at the top and can look back, I think I will. I've been a part of Pack 68 at Tate School, where I was introduced to the scouting program and fell in love with it. It is there that I earned every rank, from Tiger Club to Wigelos, as well as my Arrow of Light. I then crossed into Troop 46 at Cokesbury United Methodist Church, where I would earn every rank, including now Eagle, and be elected as an Order of the Arrow candidate. I would additionally earn 41 merit badges and additional many awards. I am in the Pellissippi Lodge of the Order of the Arrow, where I am proud to serve as the Lodge Chapel, and I am additionally involved with the ceremony team in my individual chapter, the Mount Lecomte Chapter. I then joined Crew 46, and besides a relatively snowless experience at Ukpik, I haven't been in there a very long time, but I look forward to the adventure ahead. <coughs> Reminiscing across all of scouting would not be conducive to a short and sweet speech, so I'll stay away from that, but I will happily look at some of the high points. Some of the most memorable parts of scouting was high adventure, spanning from the Sangre de Cristo Mountains of Finland to the 10,000 lakes of Northern Tier, all the way down south to the clear waters of Seabase, and then back into the Appalachians for the hairy, hazy forests of the Summit Bechtel Reserve. High Adventure was without a doubt the high point of scouting. I remember the sunrise of Schaefer's Peaks and the sunset on Loch Lacroix. I remember the coral of Matacumbe Key and the wind on Baldy Mountain. I remember the brooding storms of the ancient Appalachian Mountains and the frozen lakes where the loons still call and the moose still roam. One cannot understand the scope of what it means to be human without first experiencing where we came from, utter beauty and wildness. With all these experiences came a lifetime of lessons. In my observation of nature, I have seen that which is essential to this life. You must be patient, for everything that happens will balance out in its due time. You must be appreciated, for all the things you have in life are fundamentally good, and something is only bad when you refuse to see the good in it. Not only in my observation of the world have I learned the things which will guide me for the rest of my life. In leading other people, I have also discovered that which is essential. You must be humble, for an arrogant mind will lead only to scornful, word, scornful words, distanced people, and an unsatisfied soul. You must be responsible, for unless you can hold yourself accountable, you will never be able to trust yourself, let alone trust other people, or have them trust you. You must be confident, for if you believe yourself to be unworthy, your actions will reflect that, and you will not succeed in what you do. And lastly, you must be kind. Without kindness, the world is a dark and dreary place, and all it takes is that beacon of compassion that we can all carry. Scouting has taught me what it means to be a human. In the wise words of the founder of our movement, Lord Robert Baden Powell, it has been fun with a purpose, and when someone asks me what it has prepared me for, I will give his response. Why, any old thing. And more importantly, scouting has given me the experience of a lifetime. I have done things I would have never thought, thought possible. And through scouting, I have done them all and more. The most important thing scouting has taught me, given me, is all of you. As I look out, all I can see are people that I am proud to call my beloved family, my mentors and friends, my fellow scouts. Without scouting, I would not truly understand what it, be, what it means 
have any of, to have any of you all. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Thank you for being part of my life, and I cannot wait to be with you all in the future. Before I close this speech, I have three charges. First, to those who have yet to achieve, whatever it is that you set out to do, from waking up in the morning to changing your life, you must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. You must face your fear. You must permit it to pass over and through you. And when it has gone past, you will turn your inner eye to see its path. Where there is fear, where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only you will remain. The next is to those who have achieved. Never forget how you achieved. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. We are all here because someone else was too. You have drank from wells that you did not dig. You have warmed yourself by a fire that you did not build. And now the torch passes to you. You must now plant a tree, which the shade of which you know you will never rest. You must help others achieve what they desire, and above all, you must remain humble. The final charge is to everyone whom I know. The great philosopher Seneca says, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient. For he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. So go, do, so go do just that. Enjoy life and embrace it. Drink in from the great gift that is life. Soak in the sunshine. Relish every drop of rain. Feel the wind and smell the earth. Do this and serve your fellow man. Think of others always first. And do this with your life, something that benefits everybody. Serve with gladness, not begrudging your fellow man. And do so with a smile on your face, always being appreciative of the gift of life. If you do this, you'll be nothing short of who you want to be. Scouting has given me everything, and for that I will repay it by continuing the cycle. Every day I will continue to be a scout in every sense of that word. Scouting will be a part of my life for as long as I live, and in scouting's continuance I will find joy and gladness in all things. Scouting will be a part of my life forever, and I will be a scout forever. I would be honored if you all would join me. Thank you. Will the Convocation of Eagles please come forward to begin our closing? I am the Eagle, and I am prepared to stand for the virtues of freedom, strength, and pride. I am the Eagle. I am prepared to serve my God, my country, and other people. I'm the Eagle. I'm prepared to stand for honesty, truth, and integrity. I'm the Eagle. I am prepared to strive for excellence in all things and lead others in doing the same. I am the Eagle. I am prepared to defend what makes America great for all people. I am the Eagle. I am prepared to cross all lines of race, creed, and nationality. I am the Eagle. I am prepared to be self-reliant and resourceful. I am the Eagle. I am prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retiring of the colors. Color guard attention, audience attention, color guard forward march. Color guard halt. Color guard, retire the colors.
Color Guard Reform. Color Guard Return to Post. Color Guard Hall. Color Guard Dismiss. Please stay standing for the benediction. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming this afternoon and participating in this celebration for Miles. We are honored by your presence. Miles and his family invite you to stay for refreshments and fellowship in Hensley Hall. This court of honor is now closed. <laughs>